night Do I dare trust my words To praise you Do I dare trust my voice To sing Holy My name is Earl Reimer, Director of Development for Eden Foundation. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this presentation of Songs and Stories of Hope, Healing and Community. We've got a list of people who are going to share their personal stories of hope and healing. And the purpose of those stories is to encourage and inspire you. You're also going to hear from Danny Plett and an ensemble of musicians present music intended to do the same thing. Danny is a professional musician working predominantly in Germany since 1992 with other professional musicians in a service mission organization called Teach Beyond. Many years ago, it was known as the Jans Team. He's composed virtually all of the music that you're going to hear here today, and it will be in English. What you've heard as you connected was one of his compositions. This is also intended to be a fundraising event for Eden Healthcare Services. This is an organization that has as its vision that people on a mental health journey experience hope, healing, and community. We do have a very good partnership with Manitoba Health who provides funding for our hospital and outpatients. And as Eden has stepped up to help bring about services beyond the agreement with our provincial government funders, Individuals, businesses, and other organizations have stepped in to support the work financially. Throughout the presentation, you'll see a connection to a secure donation page that you can visit anytime. You're going to hear stories from a number of people. They're going to be sharing some of their journey with mental health, and we hope you'll feel a connection with them. That's what this is about.
protect me, His precious Son to save me. I'll rise today. Kaufman. I'm the CEO of Eden Healthcare Services. Eden is a mental health organization that provides wraparound mental health services. And I always like to say from hospitalization through to housing and everywhere in between. We have Recovery of Hope, which is our counseling division. We have our inpatient mental health center for acute uh, psychiatric issues. We also have outpatient psychiatry. We have community mental health programs and services, which are offered in partnership with Southern Health Santé Sud. And then we have Segway, which is our employment division, as well as housing and supports for individuals that require affordable housing.
Kim Kaufman, our CEO, listed the various components that make up the Eden organization. Some of those programs exist as a partnership with our provincial government, and then other components are completely separate from that funding source. And the support we receive from individuals supports many of those initiatives. Recently, donations have been used to renovate suites at ENDS Courts that have helped improve quality of life for residents of Winkler, improved security and lighting at Wilson Courts in Steinbach. We've provided financial support, which has provided people with limited resources to seek help from Recovery of Hope counseling services. We've built a visitor's pod at Eden Mental Health Center, making private visiting space available not only now during a time of COVID-19, but for years to come. We've provided resources to segue career options that helped people find job placements we funded community choices enrichment programs, which offered isolated people the opportunity to enjoy exercise programs, pool time at an indoor pool, bowling or art classes, to name only a few. We funded Central Station's BAG program, or Better Access to Groceries, which is a bulk grocery buying program, which has made it possible for people to buy nutritious foods at a price that they can afford. We've supported the work of Eden Mental Health Center's volunteer program, which during non-COVID times has connected the community to people resident at the mental health hospital. And we've provided funds so that gifts could be purchased for those who needed to stay in hospital over Christmas. Let's get back to more music. There are times I'm afraid of the winding of your ways while our misery and day why the dark of despair even after desperate prayer is wrong wishing you'd explain even though i may Every mystery found in your plan Still I will say Great is your wisdom Great is your goodness Great is your glory, Lord Kneeling before you In faith I will trust you Great is your glory Lord. There are times I'm afraid of the winding of your ways while our misery and pain. Why the dark of despair, even after desperate prayer, is a wrong wishing you'd explain even though I may not understand every mystery found in your plan still I will say great is your wisdom great is your goodness great is your glory Great is your glory, Lord. In seasons of deep despair, on days when I lose my way, when doubt threatens to ensnare, when friends threaten to betray, when death like the sea waves roll, Jesus, help me find my way. Back to my eternal rock, Spirit, help me trust and say, Great is your wisdom, great is your goodness, great is your glory, Lord. And be there for you, in faith I will trust you, great is your glory. Your glory. 
Great is your glory, Lord. Hi, I'm Justin Falk with the Falk Fair Foundation. Your mental health influences how you think and how you feel. Strong mental health allows you to cope with stress, overcome challenges, and build and maintain healthy relationships. Eden Healthcare Services provides support through their programs such as Recovery of Hope Counseling or Segway Career Options. Your mental health is important.
Haley Thiessen is the owner of two fitness studios in southern Manitoba. These bar studios are different from a muscle hut in that all the exercises are based on those used in a ballet school. Some time ago, Kaylee connected with us, wanting to contribute in some way to the work of the Eden organization. While we talked, I was interested in why a ballet-disciplined exercise studio would be interested and motivated to do something in our behalf. And Kaylee shared part of her story with us and has volunteered to do that again here. I call it my breaking point because that's when I really knew something was going on. I had a lot of big changes in my life over the course of a year to two years. My name is Kaylee Thiessen. I am originally from Estevan, Saskatchewan. Um, I am married and living in Winkler. I've been in Manitoba for, oh, almost five years now. I'm the owner and currently the sole bar instructor of Aura Studio. I grew up dancing, which really combines into the work that I do. So I get to, uh, I don't even really call it a job. I get to have fun every day and get paid for it. So I can't complain about that. As much as I loved growing up dancing, body image is a huge thing with dance and I definitely struggled with that. In high school, I got bullied by friends. Um, that played a big, a really big role when I kind of look back at everything. We moved to Winnipeg, leaving my friends and family back in Saskatchewan, starting fresh on my end, trying to integrate myself into a community that is extremely welcoming and extremely wonderful, um, but is, it was my husband's home and I was the outsider. It's just a bunch of little things that, um, yeah, led to just that moment where I wasn't myself. I was honest with my husband, but I don't think I was completely honest with him with how I truly was feeling. And I don't think I was honest with myself that it scared me more than I wanted to admit. My friends and family mean everything to me and it hurt me that more than I let on to leave them. Um, even though our friendships have never changed, it was still, that played a really big role because I felt like I was leaving a piece of me behind and I was following someone. And I talked it out with my husband a lot being like, this is, I'm struggling with this. I, I don't feel like I'm myself. I feel like I'm a shadow of you. That feeling of confusion. Yeah, who am I? I don't, I don't know. Um, I feel like I'm growing up all over again and trying to figure out who I am. It's like, I should be past that. I was telling my doctor in, my, in Winkler, I'm tired all the time. And it wasn't just physical exhaustion, it was the mental exhaustion. That's when the word depression first got brought in. I went through the embarrassment phase, the ashamed phase, the scared phase still. Um, I went through many phases before I finally was okay to talk about it openly. Um, I went on an antidepressant and I remember leaving the doctor's office. I had cried because <laughs> I was just saying, like, what is happening? Um, I felt like that I was maybe failing as a person, <laughs> um, failing as a partner, um, 
as I mean, even as a dog mom, like all of these things, I like I just I felt like I was failing at life. Would try to explain to my husband, this is how I'm feeling, but I couldn't figure out the words. I couldn't figure out how to explain it, and he couldn't understand that anxiety of. Am I going to do something wrong that's going to push him away? When is he going to get fed up with me and tired of having to handle all of my emotions and and leave? He tried so hard, and I put him through a lot, for sure. And he stuck it out. And uh, I tell him all the time that I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for his support. And not making my fears come true that he's gonna leave. So he's a very good man. <laughs> it was like a complete 180 after that doctor's appointment. And, uh, and I've, never, never looked back. My brain is sick. My brain needs some help. I needed the antidepressants to f get me back to a level where I could not function. I was functioning, but that's all I was doing. I was just functioning. So once I adjusted to the medication, it took me a couple months to fully start to feel more like myself. It wasn't until I got into counseling that I really started to learn things that suited me, the tools that suited me. 2020 was a very good tester year. As hard of a year as 2020 was, I actually look at that year in a very positive way because I look at it as like almost like it was te like I tested the tools that I have and they all worked and I came out fine. I survived it and more than just survived, I thrived. I'm bringing a, a child into the world from 2020 and my business was doing well and it's all these tools that has helped. So yeah, I went from doing nothing, succumbing to it, to finally taking it to control. Declaring truth will win Come join that mighty sound Feel the rumble of the ground Come join that awesome noise A billion miles but a single voice It's that universal thunder From up north to deep down under It's that global hallelujah shouting Jesus You came, you did your worst We raise that mighty sound and Feel the rumble of the ground We turn up that awesome noise A billion miles but a single voice It's that universal thunder From up north and deep down under It's that global hallelujah Shouting Jesus is the king It's the voice of all God's children From the preacher to the pilgrim Shouting, Jesus is the King, yeah! 
shout the victory from sea to shining sea, calling for the death of sin, declaring truth will win. Come join that mighty sound, feel the rumble of the ground. Come and join that awesome noise, a billion miles but a single voice. It's that universal thunder from up north to deep down under. It's that global hallelujah shouting Jesus is the King. It's the voice of all God's children from the preacher to the pilgrim. It's that global can call the Recovery of Hope office, which would be located at our Main Street location in Winkler and or out of Winnipeg, uh, to make an appointment. And uh, we have various different options for individuals to pay for those counseling sessions if you can't afford the rate associated with counseling services. So uh, our foundation and community support help make a sliding fee scale possible to make counseling accessible to anybody that needs it. Segway is our employment division and Segway helps individuals that have difficulty maintaining or obtaining permanent employment, uh, kind of helping individuals of all ages and abilities and especially at a time of COVID where there has been some changes in the job market, Segway is well positioned to respond to those needs and help individuals to secure employment in the future.
Nathan Elias is a successful businessman with a large staff and independent contractors. His position brings with it the daily stresses one expects of this important role. Nathan has shared with us and has the courage to share with anyone willing to listen about his personal struggle with anxiety and depression. I didn't know what was wrong, but my mother told me I should seek help. And the first thing I did was I went to go and talk to my pastor. That was quite the experience for me. When I went to go talk to him, I explained what was going on and what was happening. And I guess I went there with the, the hope that he would fix everything and say a prayer and all be good. However, I realized that that wasn't going to happen that night. When I left there that evening, I was almost more upset and disturbed than when I got there because I figured if the, the pastor and the good Lord can't fix me like that, who can? And it took me, he actually admitted to me and or he told me, he said that I should go see, me, seek medical help and I did. I made an appointment with my family doctor and I have finally accepted I am who I am. Depression is real, it's everywhere. Everyone has it. I think a tough thing for society to acknowledge is that it's not like a test where you pass or fail. You either have cancer or you don't. In the past few years, I've not been afraid of my issues, my anxiety, my depression. I'm not scared to talk about it anymore. I quite, uh, quite often I bring it up when I'm out in public or meeting new people. And it's interesting how many people deal with it every day and are just too scared to talk about it. When I finally saw medical help and got diagnosed, got medication and counseling to help me, I was so happy because maybe now I can start to be healed. But I knew it'd be a slow process. It wouldn't happen overnight. You are a 
tower strong You are the sweetest song You are a mystery It's so accessible to me You are a mighty king You are my everything You are my comforter My healer and provider You are the first and last The future and the past You are the three in one The Father, Holy Heidi Friesen is a young woman who has shared with us that she's dealt with mental health issues for a long time and has found the help that she's needed to lead a full and balanced life. That's included building her own business and then being willing to tell her story in the hope of encouraging others to also seek help instead of suffering alone and in silence. I was working at a job where I was spread pretty thin. Um, things were quite stressful. In between quitting that job and starting the one I'm currently at, I had my first ever panic attack and it was horrifying.
My name is Heidi Friesen. I am from Winkler. I'm born and raised here. I run my business, Heidi and Seek Boutique, part-time, and I do have a part-time job in the area here as well. Ending a job is a big um, thing to go through on its own. And then start well, and then starting a new one, I think a week later is a whole nother set of challenges and things to learn and things like that. So it was it was basically like it was all too much. It all added up to too much for me to be able to handle. And so that's kind of the crisis point where everything started. Your body is doing things that you haven't told it to do. It's terrifying. Something overwhelms me and I start hyperventilating. In that particular situation, everything was really tense and I was also like in control, uncontrollably shaking. Um, and then you can also feel um, pressure in your chest. Basically, I thought I was dying. My first one was the worst one. I would say now a couple of years later when it's they're not as regular but when they do happen it's right away hyperventilation and then until it, it kind of um escalates and then all of a sudden i'm just on the ground and i'm sobbing i'll get like a hot rush through my body which now i rec can recognize and like do things to try to um or tell myself, remind myself, it's okay, like take deep breaths, like you recognize this feeling, it's not, you're not dying. It just kind of takes over. It's almost like you're in, your, your brain just has this moment and you're in it, but then when you're on the other side, you're like, what just happened? <laughs> Even though you felt it while it was, while it was going on and and I, I don't know how much longer they would have lasted had someone not been there. It generally happens when there's a number of factors. Let's say I, it's combined with I haven't had enough sleep lately, I haven't had enough exercise, um, and then something else in life is overwhelming me, and then there's a trigger usually after that. So already things have kind of been escalating to this. I'm not sure that I knew what self-care was when I, this first started. Like my doctor gave me lots of things to do. I saw a counselor right away and um, they gave me the tools I needed to, to be able to take care of myself properly. First of all, uh, medication, regular exercise and enough sleep, like the two most important things. And then uh, cognitive brain therapy with the counselor. I'm pro counseling. I think everyone uh, can make use of it. Um, there's a huge stigma around going to counseling and admitting that there's something you want to work on. A lot of us are just are pretending in a sense of like, well, I can put this face on, right? And, and pretend like everything's okay, where inside you're kind of like screaming. I think of my brain and my body as like a battery. So the more I'm depleted, the worse things are going to be for me. And I need to just shut everything down and recharge my batteries. If you're at the end of your battery charge, anything feels like a mountain. It took me a long, long time to be able to say no. I am a very strong people pleaser. I've spent a lot of my life trying to be the person I thought people wanted me to be and in turn it's made me think well who who am I really then if I've been trying to please people this whole time I, I've had to set boundaries because the more the busier I am the more I say yes to things the more my battery depletes and I can't do it anymore don't wait to reach out for help you don't have to suffer. If I think back to my teenage years, had I been given the help I have now, how much less fear I might have had to live with would have been invaluable. It would have been amazing. I, I can't imagine how much better that would have been. 
after many years of counseling, I can say that it has been immensely helpful. I can't imagine not having taken the help to get to where I am today. It's, it's, it's hard, but it's so much better. My doctor used the phrase quality of life and I had a very poor quality of life and at this point I can say I have a very high quality of life. Jesus lover of my soul you can
is David Graham, and I'm all about the music. I've really always been just sort of a folky at heart. There are certain points along the way that you can look at and say, ah, you know what? I remember when I was eight years old, all those little things play a part in your personality, I guess. But at the crux of it all, like when I encountered mental health for real, it was really about my emotional health and well-being and having to acknowledge certain emotions like anger was the main thing so if you get angry you don't really think well and being angry at things that are much much bigger than you often doesn't end well so pretty much i was really angry that the world was the way it was I had um, I had a number of people telling me that um, that I wasn't really like making sense. Nobody really knew what the problem was. I just seemed to be not myself. I needed to look after myself a bit better and, and I tended to agree but I was so I was so upset that the world you know global warming and global calamities and it just seems like this whole place is gonna blow up sometimes right and meanwhile I'm thinking gee I want to start a family and that and it so those were really the conflicting forces in my head of like how am I supposed to start a family when the world seems like it's just not a great place. <laughs> Why would I want to bring kids into this world, right? It's a really, really um, sad place to be. It's kind of nihilistic. Everything's going to be destroyed. All these thoughts in my head but they weren't exercised it just was left there sort of fermenting and stewing and then <laughs> was like you know what I was just livid the journey involved a lot of uh, mistakes a lot of exploration a lot of questions wrote a lot of songs, a lot of music. I was able to focus on what kind of problems I was most hindered by. Music is described as your left brain and your right brain working in cohesion. It helps organize thoughts. Sometimes things feel in a jumble, so recognizing that power for health and for healing, accepting moments of chaos and moments of order, you know, building a tolerance to really just how life is, accepting the things that are out of my control. Acceptance and tolerance. By the end of like, the worst years, those were my words. Two words solved everything for me is that was my problem. I was unable to accept or tolerate my own problems, the problems of the world. Life is temporary and, and eternity is eternal. And you sort of weigh these concepts. Uh, once was lost, now I'm found. You know, felt ill, I feel well. I was sick, now I'm whole, you know, 
it's those those two points of the spectrum like I, I looked a lot at bipolar disorders if it's a disorder because of extremes well balance is the key you count your blessings you know that's like i had some place safe to go i had a community around me and and my church community is like my church family and that's like an extended family that's 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 something like that's incredible these are my community elders they they watched me grow up so you know when you're i had a mental health struggle yeah and i had a big solution just waiting for me right there because these people they knew me and as much as i felt way out of sorts it was it was there's stability these people are rocks in my life we listen to each other and, and we provide for each other and I've learned you know through some good conversation with uh, good friends you know how how big it is to listen to someone by creating space you create a space where somebody feels safe again they feel safe and they're able to develop thoughts and ideas just by verbally reasoning and having a checkpoint Mental health is the worst, I would say, for people who are isolated. If they don't have a community, a good friend, some acquaintances, you know, those circles of their own social circles, you know, people need those things. To me, mental health has always been getting a clear conscience. If you have peace in your heart, then you can perceive mental health. Warren Friesen is a father, a teacher, and a recording musician who at a young age recognized that something just wasn't right and has courageously sought the help needed to allow him to overcome those imbalances in his brain in order to lead a full and engaged life. I started my second year of post-secondary at CNBC and something went wrong uh, in my mind, so to speak. I got extremely anxious sense of doom that I just could not explain. Um, so that's when I knew that something was was not quite right. Started seeing uh, counselors, doctors, but eventually was uh, heard the words uh, clinical depression for the first time. From I'm more than willing to talk to, to people and say, uh, I deal with uh, clinical depression. My, f my father, uh, dealt with depression in his early years of marriage and he tells a story of uh, a well-intentioned neighbor who said uh, get dressed pull, up, pull yourself up by your bootstraps and, and get going I think that's probably one of the worst uh, things you could say to somebody dealing with a, a mental health issue or depression as you are depressed because of the illness. As a Christian, uh, my faith has been extremely important to me and helpful. Faith, if you had more faith, you wouldn't be depressed. Uh, that one is is one of my biggest pet peeves. And is it, it heaps guilt on a person. And the last thing a depressed person needs is more guilt. It is therapeutic for me to, to talk about it if I share my story with, with somebody and it brings them that moment of, hey, me too, I'm not the only person because there is still this uh, stigma that's out there and a whole lot less than it used to be, thank goodness. And if I can bring that kind of relief because people have given me that relief, then there's this uh, sense of, 
gosh, this dark road has not been for naught. Sylvia Fair shared her story with us about her life with her daughter who has been dealing with significant mental health challenges. Like everyone's mental health story, this is not a short one with a quick solution. It's a lifelong commitment to be involved in someone's life and walk alongside over the course of that journey. Our daughter's name is Lorianne. She's a very brilliant girl. She was always top of her class. And later on, I noticed, maybe she was her early 20s, she would tell me things, and I'm like, what? This does not sound real. Don't look for me because it's not safe. 
because these people are going to spirit me away and it's good if you don't know where I am. And I'm like, whoa. She went on a mission trip to northern Alberta and she met, and by this time she's in her early 30s, and she met this man. Then she told us she's getting married to this man and the way she's talking to us about him, we're hearing things and this does not sound good. Like he's an alcoholic, but that was the illness and it was saying that God told me to marry him. She got pregnant immediately and then she phoned and said, can I come home? So we lived with this trauma in our home and then she had her baby and then it was like she told, told him you have to leave and he's saying like, I want to be married to you, help us. So we tried to talk with her, with him, and we were hoping she could go to Eden again because, and they said, well, we have to take her where it's open, where there's room, and we're hoping, oh, please let it be Eden. That is a Christian-based place, and we could tell the difference. Very good care, excellent. And then they took her to Eden Mental Health Center. And here we are with two adult children with a little baby. Finally, they've got her on this med that is working for her. It's been a number of years. And when I look at people now, I see them different. They are people like you and me. Same hopes and wishes and dreams and desires and aspirations, things they want in life. They want to be loved. We need to get over this stigma. Nobody chooses, I'm going to have mental illness. I choose to have this. No. It's a sickness. It's an illness. Nobody chooses that. We're not ashamed to say, I broke my leg. Look. I'd like to introduce this as part of my musical meditations, medication for the soul. It's called Prairie Drive. I've also titled this song uh, Rippling Grass. It's, uh, it, it just commemorates a road trip that I took with my mom uh, through small town Manitoba.
theology student Grace Kang was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, she found herself forced to reevaluate almost everything. So she went to grad school. Her thesis? Exploring the relationship between spirituality and mental health with a particular reference to Christian mystics Teresa of Avila and John of the Cross. Wrestling with her diagnoses, seemingly unable to find where God fit in, she studied to find out what God had to say about mental illness, with the hope of eventually being able to benefit someone else struggling in a similar way. Here's Grace to share a little about her present journey. Bipolar illness for me is an illness of ups and downs. It's an illness that distorts your emotions and makes you feel uh, extremely high and extremely low. I think the first time I really noticed that I was experiencing these ups and downs was when I um, became a teenager. About when I was 13, I experienced my first uh, dip into depression. And at the time, um, I didn't know very much about mental health. And so I was just really frustrated that I couldn't, you know, snap out of feeling so low and um, even feeling suicidal. As my life went on through uh, middle school and high school, I, I kept cycling. Like I would have a year of really elevated, just like outgoing, um, like it felt like a like a, an entire like personality switch. Like I just uh, became like this high achieving, uh, highly motivated person. And then I, a year later, I would have this depressive crash where I would just like withdraw and um, become suicidal and self-harming and just very, very depressed. It didn't make very much sense to me because it, it was kind of um, separated from external circumstances. Like it, it wasn't like there was a good thing that happened. It just changed my life and I became that happy, bubbly person again. It was just like out of nowhere, I would just kind of switch It would be really noisy and ch like chattery when I was high and then it would just be really despondent and, and really discouraged when I was low. I couldn't separate it from who I was because I didn't understand what was happening to me. So I thought that that's just who I was, that I was this depressed, like pessimistic kind of feeling person. Like nobody likes me, I am the worst. All I do is mess up, all these like kind of self-deprecating statements. And then when I would jump up to feeling a little bit more elevated, I I had this kind of inner sense that it was weird. When you go from feeling amazing and you, like you can do anything and then you like dip down to feeling like just like you like can't do anything, it's a really discouraging feeling. I found myself feeling really just defeated because I couldn't tell who I was. Whenever I would cycle through these things, I would I would just identify with the emotion. I couldn't separate it from my identity, which eventually like led to a lot of like inner work that needed to be done in order to separate those feelings so that I could like distinguish myself from these feelings and find my inner worth not in how I felt or how like I was presenting, but in in like my inner resources. It takes a lot of resources to be hypomanic. At the time, like it feels like you don't need anything. You just feel like you're invincible and that you don't need anyone or anything in order to keep going this way, which is not true. <laughs> I think the body just naturally crashes from that state because it's just unsustainable. It's incredibly exhausting going through those cycles and knowing that it's going to happen again is is one of the hardest things, um, in my opinion, about the illness. I 
I think I always believed in visions. I had a group of friends. They were interested in supernatural experiences of God. And um, I just happened to be in a pretty elevated state when I met them. And um, and so we kind of clicked right away. And, and then I started having these visions. Am I just projecting what I think God is? Um, into like my my visions or whatever they were. I don't want to have like a projected experience of God. I want to like, I want to experience new things about God. And I think that's kind of when um, like I started to see things that I didn't expect. I would see different angels around the room. The visions were so vivid, like I could, I could see like on the angels, I could see exactly what they were wearing. And I'd have experiences of visions that would prompt me to pray for people. Um, they would normally be received very well. When I was diagnosed, um, I didn't know what was like real and what was just part of my illness. Initially, it was very difficult because I felt like I like my entire faith was fake. I think I had a hard time going through like my entire life, basically, and being like, where was I like, where was I sick? Where was I ill? And where was I having like an authentic experience? And I came to realize that just because I was ill in certain points in my life doesn't mean that the experiences were inauthentic. And looking back on it, I can't say it was all just because of the hypomanic experience because it did have such a positive impact on my community. I definitely look to the Bible uh, to kind of compare my experiences to those of um, with the prophets and, and other people who experienced visions. And, and um, I think my visions were a little bit less scary. <laughs> I was just looking for someone in the Christian tradition who had experiences similar to me. So I started looking back throughout history and, and I found Teresa of Avila. She would have these really interactive experiences with, um, with God and um, heavenly beings. And I was like, that kind of sounds like, that kind of sounds like what I was experiencing. <laughs> and, um, and then I was like, but what about like, being depressed and so I couldn't I couldn't find any like people who like had both of those um together but I found John of the Cross who uh talked very in depth about the dark night of the soul they were both quite innocent in the way that they talked about their own experiences and um, how they were of God and and it wasn't that they didn't doubt the innocence of the way that they talked about their experiences their honesty about the doubt that they experience um, but like still having faith at the same time I found it really inspirational to me that that they were able to push through doubt and still see their experiences as being of God, even though they were peculiar for the time. Over time, I came to realize that that God uses what's there. And what was there for me was bipolar illness. I've been stable for probably about two years. Feeling stable feels like there's space in your brain for everything to exist and coexist in um, a more or less harmonious way. <laughs> the biggest revelation I had about my illness was that no one can do it for me. Like, I have to want to get well and I have to use those tools that people give me. When you're really, really sick, people do things for you, like they, like when I was in the hospital, they they would obviously feed me and um, they would have a schedule for me and they would give me the meds I need to sleep and um, they would give me counseling and I would see a psychiatrist and all this stuff. But if you're if you want that like 
a healing to be sustainable and to to last over a long period of time then you have to really kind of take ownership of your well-being it takes a lot of effort at first but it does get easier i want to know god more and uh continue in relationship with him and that doesn't that isn't defined by whether or not i have visions i don't know if i i'm saying this right but yeah visions are are like cool and stuff but um the coolest thing is that that god came down and became jesus and became human and um and everyone is able to see god through jesus um because because his revelation is recorded in scripture and also because God reveals himself. These stories are offered in the hope of being of benefit to others who find themselves on a mental health journey. I mentioned earlier on that this is also intended to be a fundraising effort for the work of Eden and the programs that make up the services that we provide for people on that mental health journey. So where do we go from here? I hope that you will click on the link below that will take you to a secure donation site and that you'll consider making a donation in support of the work that Eden does across southern Manitoba. I encourage you to copy the link to the concert and send it to people that you know that might enjoy the music that Danny Platt and his ensemble presented and also to those that you think might be encouraged by some of the stories that have been shared here. Thank you for being here. You heal my wounds, Lord. We'll heal them all. You wipe the tears from my eyes. Still the fears in my mind. You heal my wounds, Lord. Will heal them all. Oh, how wonderful you are. You heal my wounds, Lord. You heal them all. You wipe the tears from my eyes. You still the fears in my mind. You heal my wounds, Lord. Heal them all. Oh, how wonderful you are. You unchain my praise, you give it wings to fly. Let it fly straight to your heart of love. You unchain. tears from my eyes you still the fears in my mind you heal my wounds oh we heal them all oh how wonderful you are you unchain my praise you give it wings to fly Oh, wow.
how wonderful you are You unchain my praise You gave it wings to fly Let it fly straight to your heart of earth You unchain Heal 